This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. Welcome to the program. I'm Roby Brock. As always, thanks for joining us. Well, new guidance came out this past week on elective surgeries, some of the bread and butter business of hospitals and the medical community. That gave me the opportunity to sit down with Eric Pianalto, Mercy Health Northwest president, to find out how his healthcare system has coped with COVID-19. Well, Eric, as a healthcare leader, what have the past six weeks been like for you uh, in terms of how you and your hospital have coped with COVID-19? Yeah, you know, Roby, that's a, a great question. Uh, the last six or seven weeks have been, you know, seven days a week, uh, 15, 20 hour days, um, a lot of time on the phone, a lot of times with our team, uh, doing a lot of planning, uh, pretty intense work. But, you know, I would also say, um, I admire and, and just marvel at uh, our physician leaders, our nurse leaders, uh, how their teams have responded to this crisis and the amount of work they're doing um, is, uh, is, is something that we should all be proud of. Uh, it's, it's incredible work and, and uh, they're exceptional people and, and just uh, great for the community. It, it, it's been incredible. Well, we've obviously had a relaxing of some of the guidelines around elective surgeries um, from the health department. Um, some things are going to return a little bit more to normal in a, a hospital setting and some of the medical clinics and physician clinics. Um, tell me what's right around the corner. What are you working on in terms of uh, how it relates to elective surgeries and some of the other procedures that might be allowed? Sure. Uh, we are ready to uh, begin start taking care of patients for needed services. Uh, Something I like to remind people uh, is we take care of infectious disease every day. That's a seven day a week, 365 day a year. Uh, we have infectious disease in our hospitals, in our, in our facilities. We're used to taking care of infectious disease. Uh, so we're ready, we're, we're prepared all of the time to take care of our uh, people who need health care safely and effectively. Uh, the governor did lift restrictions this week for elective procedures, imaging, uh, a lot of our normal services, but uh, we'll still go about that slow, both from a safety perspective. This is uh, highly infectious and we want to be sure that uh, people feel comfortable in our facilities, but also, uh, you know, as you've seen on the national news, uh, protective equipment has been in short supply. Uh, testing continues and testing kits has continued to be in short supply. So. We want to be mindful as we start this back up uh, that we have enough supplies on hand to take care of the public and to protect our folks. So it, it's a nice balance right now. Uh, we'll remain vigilant. We'll remain ready if uh, it, in the event that we do see a surge in this community. But uh, we have a lot of folks that really need to start getting their care again, and uh, we don't need to defer or delay that any longer. Well, there's been a lot of emphasis on safety over the last few weeks uh, on protocol for not coming to the hospital at all unless absolutely necessary. Uh, more people have been pushed to online services. They've been um, encouraged to go other places or to deal with their health issues in other ways. Speak to this issue of safety for people um, who are going to have the opportunity to return to the hospitals now. Alleviate that fear of patient safety for me. Sure. You know, I, I will tell you the primary reason that we've asked folks to stay home and, and not be in our facilities and we put those restrictions in place is that this particular infection, um, there, a lot of people could get it and could get it rapidly. What that causes us to do as healthcare workers uh, to protect our patients and to protect our uh, staff and teams, our doctors, our nurses and others, uh, we have to use a lot of protective equipment in that instance. And so there was a lot in the beginning we didn't know about this virus. So we, there was a potential for us to overuse protective equipment, uh, overuse uh, our supplies and, and the many things that we need to care for infectious patients. We know a lot more about uh, the disease at this point. Uh, and uh, we've been able to uh, stockpile our supplies a little bit more with a lot of help from the community. Uh, so that uh, we will still be ready for a surge while we're also treating people who come into our facilities. We have great screening um, uh, methods in place for people that enter our facilities, including me. I get screened sometimes two or three times a day. 
uh, as I walk into our facilities. I feel completely safe. I'm there uh, six, seven days a week uh, as, as all of our team members are. And uh, I, I'm not concerned about the public coming in. Uh, we just want to continue to stay vigilant. We want to continue to preserve our personal protective equipment uh, in the event there is a surge. Well, your hospital has been working regionally with other hospitals and healthcare systems uh, in Northwest Arkansas. Lots of communication, lots of coordination. Uh, tell me, where did the notion for all of this begin and what's been the upside in your estimation? Yeah, so I, I might uh, highlight a few things around, around that. First, um, you know, it, there is a benefit to the fact that uh, Larry Shackelford and I, uh, who runs Washington Regional, uh, are both from the area. We've known each other for many years. Uh, we've been colleagues and friends, and uh, so we have a, a natural formed relationship that I think has been really helpful and really important uh, during this time. Um, about two years ago, the, also the Northwest Arkansas Council brought a group of healthcare leaders together uh, to begin to talk about healthcare transformation for the area as the area has grown and what gaps in services uh, exist here, um, you know, really ramping up uh, graduate medical education, GME, and also looking at maybe a four-year medical school, many, many things we've been talking about uh, among all of the health systems for the last couple of years. So we also had kind of a natural forum uh, created around those topics. We quickly switched um, and pivoted to uh, dealing with a crisis. and. Um, you know, the, uh, it, it's hard to believe the last week of February I was on vacation. I was, I was out of the country on vacation. Uh, this was just starting a little bit at that time. Uh, but while I was gone and on my way back, really, uh, it really started ramping up and a lot of concern. And the governor um, issued a state of emergency not long after that. And we all started preparing as individual health systems, uh, rightly so. Uh, we started messaging as individual health systems, and um, I picked up the phone, called Larry, called uh, Denton Park at Northwest, and said, you know, our community's confused by the national media. Uh, they're confused by our messages sometimes because they're very different. Uh, we engaged uh, Martine Pollard uh, to help us from a communication standpoint to say, we really need to speak as a healthcare community, not as individuals, not as institutions. Uh, and we need the, the public to get a clear and sound message from the healthcare community here. And that was really our primary focus in the beginning. And then we took our individual plans and started combining them so that if we saw a surge like New York or like what we saw on TV in Italy or many other places in the country, we knew what our capabilities were, we knew uh, what our capital and assets were, uh, and most importantly, we knew uh, what expertise levels we had in every area and how we could best take care of the community. So the work has been phenomenal. Uh, I applaud my colleagues and the other health systems uh, for their collaborative work. Uh, and we, uh, we are prepared uh, as a community. And it'll be important that we continue a lot of that work as a community to, to remain vigilant uh, and to, to benefit the health and the life of uh, all the people here in Northwest Arkansas. Well, tell me what stays in place as far as lessons learned from uh, this pandemic. Uh, you, obviously, the community didn't get hit as hard as you thought that it would be. That is a good thing. Uh, but what stays in place in terms of lessons learned from all this execution and preparation? Sure. So, you know, for, for quite some time, um, I, I think Governor Asa Hutchinson has done a great job leading with uh, Nate Smith and the Arkansas Department of Health. Uh, and working with us, uh, we, we speak to uh, our state officials uh, often. Uh, and so, you know, I, I would say the first thing is continuing that work with uh, our state and federal delegations, along with uh, the Arkansas Health Department and many others, uh, to assure that uh, we, we continue to follow the right guidelines, that uh, we continue to educate the public uh, in an appropriate way, because this isn't going to go away uh, tomorrow. This isn't something that's going to pass in a matter of days or weeks. Um, it, it's going to take some time. So that work's going to continue both uh, from a regional perspective and then also from uh, a state perspective and a national perspective. You know, a few great lessons learned, uh, you know, speaking for myself. Uh, uh, one, uh, the community uh, response has been phenomenal. 
Uh, and uh, we've been engaged in the community for many, many years, but um, uh, I, I can't say enough about how the communities respond to help us in so many ways, uh, especially around personal protective equipment. And we're no different than most businesses. We try to keep small inventories. We try to turn our inventory over and not have excess supplies and other things sitting on the shelves. Um, and in a time like this, that becomes a problem. Um, suddenly, uh, there, there could have been a massive surge. Thankfully, in our area, uh, we had time to prepare because it was coming from the coast. So whether it hit or not, we had a little more time to prepare. But our community and, and the way we've interacted with the community and business community has been phenomenal. Uh, but what we will do is, is uh, really look at our stocks uh, and, and really look at uh, how we address uh, having enough protective equipment without having too much uh, where, where it won't be used. Um, it does have a shelf life, so uh, a big lesson there. And then I think uh, clear and concise messaging. Uh, I, the work that's been done at this point will, will benefit generations to come. This won't be the last infectious disease to sweep our state or nation or country. Um, uh, so, you know, I think all of the preparation work that's been done um, as a nation, uh, as a state, and then also locally, uh, we need to keep those, uh, those things in place. We need to remain vigilant. We need to work together uh, to assure the safety and health of, of everybody here in Northwest Arkansas. When homemade is too good to keep at home. Helping Arkansas business do business. Making better happen with First Security. You'll find us at the end of a lot of long country roads. Covering over 60% of the great state of Arkansas. Our 17 electric distribution cooperatives are working day and night to provide reliable, affordable power to over half a million homes, farms, and businesses just like yours. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, your local energy partners.